Hi there to our viewers of Equinox Television. It's time for the news and we thank you so much for joining us. We begin right away with our major stories. A nine-year-old boy is in excruciating, very serious pains in hospital after he was repeatedly sodomized by a man who is above 60. And the man promised the little boy killing his entire family, that is the victim's entire family, if the victim at, um, attempts to speak out. And also in this newscast, we will be telling you that cooking gas or domestic gas is said to be very scarce in most towns across the national territory. Stay with us for details and more. Welcome back viewers. We begin this newscast with this very sad new settlement. We just told you in the headlines that a little boy of about nine years old has been bleeding profusely from his anus after he was repeatedly sodomized allegedly by a man who is above 60. Um, the little boy he was uh, seen by our reporters in his own pool of blood that he, that was in the hospital going through very serious pains. He was sexually assaulted by a man above 60 that, is, that was in Bilonge in the Dwala 3 subdivision. The boy who went for holidays to his grandmother's place is said to have been um, sexually assaulted through the anus by the man. Um, the man is said to be um, in custody of police officers after the local population noticed that the boy was repeatedly sodomized. They, are, they attempted to lynch the uh, um, alleged rapist uh, but for the intervention of security forces and we told you on the headlines that um, the alleged rapist promised killing the guy that the alleged rapist told the, the little boy that he has a snake and will kill the little boy's grandmom the mom the dad and kill the little boy too if he attempts to speak out and we sure will be coming back to that very sad news element in our subsequent editions of the news and also we got information that a two-year-old girl was also allegedly raped by her teacher that was in a primary school in Yasa. It is still in the Dwala uh, 3 area. We will be coming back to those very sad and sensitive news elements in our subsequent editions of the news. And now with the increasing rate of um, sodomy and also rape, um, in our society, parents are getting more and more skeptical, leaving their children behind with people they know very little about their morality. A reporter, Mala Glory, spoke with um, an anthropologist, Yerin Dwala, who tells us some of the reasons these very sad events are recurrent in our society today. Her report. Gone are the days when one could confine his or her child to a close neighbor. This is due to the increasing rise of sexual abuse in children, a devastating situation to most parents, and a societal issue which takes us to psychology to understand the rising phenomenon. Concerning the, the reason why this situation is also more growing in our society, we can have uh, mostly two, three elements. First of all, those who uh, used to rape people, we did not know if they had been punished or not. For some people, it's a mental disease. They have to be followed up by a psychologist. But the other aspect, they, they wanted to be rich. And for some of them, it's a condition. Because we, they, they almost say that the devil uh, used to give you the condition he, w which he is not sure that you will go through. But as they wanted to be rich, as uh, uh, many people, they just go through the Perpetrators of such hideous acts are everywhere and sometimes even close to the children. With these, parents question on how the law protects the kids. Both boys and girls are exposed to rape. Others have been convinced and taken to an unknown destination while some have never been found. Teenagers are particularly protected by law, that is, by the universal human right and the United Nations Convention on the Protection of the Right of Children. In order to limit these, 
parents are called upon to create a suitable atmosphere that ease communication between them and the children and be vigilant with those around the kids. Parents have to be uh, close to their children and try to to make them be be aware that they cannot accept a stranger, even a brother or a sister, to to touch some part of their body. They have to 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 go to to, to tell the mother, even if the the the, the person don't want, uh, uh, even person even if the, those persons do not agree at school. As class one, class two, till class four, we have we need to have more women than to have uh, men, because at class five and class six, the, the 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 young children or the young student can can complain if there is uh, there is uh, there is problem or if he's facing to a situation. Medics advise a psychological follow up for the victims in order to regain an emotional stability. And now we talk something else in education. The a solution to the anglophone crisis is still very far-fetched, and schools are greatly affected in the southwest and the northwest regions. And schools are timidly resuming, we were told, in Bonge and Konye in the Mehmet Division of the southwest region. Basic education stakeholders from the 10th subdivisions met in relatively calm Kumba to encourage parents to gradually begin sending their children to school. As Innocent Asset tells us in the report, which comes up next. Mbonge and Kunye are some of the hardest hit subdivisions in the Meme Division of the Southwest region by the over five years old Anglophone crisis, with the educational sector heavily impacted. In the period of the crisis, 2017, zero candidates. 2018, zero candidate. 2019, zero registration. 2020, 21 candidates registered. Thanks to the head teacher of Carlin School, Mbonge Maruba. All the 20 candidates were from Mbonge Maruba. In 2021, a little improvement was recorded in school attendance. In 2021, we had 226 candidates. The number had more than tripled. And in 2022, we had 580 candidates. So the number is climbing. Despite this, the attendance rate is still very low when compared to that before 2016. We used to register about 5,000 candidates for common entrance and first school leaving exam before the crisis. Our expectation is that in 2022-23 school year, uh, from the turnout of the teachers as you saw, we shall go back to our normal number of thousands. However, this increased number of pupils, students and teachers who have regained their various schools must be armed educational-wise to keep the academic flames glowing in these subdivisions, including Kumba, where educational stakeholders converged for a pedagogic seminar. And after this pedagogic seminar, we shall follow up with pedagogic inspection in schools. And this is going to be a difficult thing, but going to areas like Bobanda, Bombele, Bangele, Zienge, Toko, Bikundu, Katakata, Ifolofo, where schools are very enclosed, it's going to be an obvious task that we hope and wish and pray that this task will achieve in those schools. Effective implementation of the newly drawn curriculum is the expectation of these pedagogic inspectors. That the new curriculum which has been drawn and the new syllabus which I have conceived and developed should be well mastered by the teachers such that they implement the new curriculum because that curriculum is based on thematical project and competence-based approaches to teaching and learning. And if they get it very well, teaching becomes very easy. Parents who are still keeping their children home, advancing security reasons, are encouraged to allow them join the academic train in Bonge, Konye and Kumba to a future of great opportunities. <laughs> And now we talk some politics. A study has revealed that just 16 out of the over 300 political parties existed in Cameroon make use of the media despite its advantages. In the report, which comes up next, a staff lady immaculate four great tells us about the obstructions that political parties have in making use of the media. The media 
has been a major tool used by political parties in Cameroon to spread the ideologies across the masses. But a little above 5% make use of the media. A study reveals that just 16 out of 316 political parties make use of media services. According to the study, the CPDM, CRM, SDF, Juvence and UPC parties top the list of media participation in Cameroon. In accordance with our law, uh, all the politicians have to go on uh, through TV in our country. But today we, we noticed that uh, more than 15 go through the media and the CPDM as the one who go uh, who have the, the the big part of the presence in different media. Article 41 of the Cameroon Law on Social Communication stipulates that political parties have the right to participate in any media of their choice. Communication experts highlight some limitations and obstructions hindering them from communicating freely. Uh, we notice that in the CRTV, no politician party have voice there and it is uh, against our law and we try to do this job to uh, to allow or to give the possibility to different uh, authorities to take to take note and to take decision to uh, solve this issue enhancing media participation and ending bias and discriminatory acts was the objective of a meeting that grouped representatives of political parties in the city of Douala. The headlines viewers that cooking gas or domestic gas is said to be very scarce in most towns in the country. Cameroon, uh, a while ago, we told you that in Bafsam, cooking gas was very scarce. Now in Kong Samba, the people, the, the people there say they have resorted to using charcoal, charcoal, which is also very expensive. Once again, a reporter, Immaculate Fogwe, has more. From one domestic gas supplier to another, Kati has visited over 30 retailers in Kongsamba, Mongo Division, yet she is not in possession of what she needs to put food on the table. She has covered several kilometers in the quest for domestic gas. I went to town yesterday in search of gas, but I could not find any. I had to use sawdust stove to prepare my children's breakfast before they could go to school. It is very difficult. When using gas, it's faster. Empty gas bottles ready to be refilled, packed in sales points. One of the major gas suppliers in the town of Kongsamba explains that only one brand is available at the moment and in very limited quantity. The fact that households don't have the brand's bottle makes it difficult to help. For a week now, we don't have gas. Several persons have come to my store in search of gas, but I don't have. The only brand which is available, they don't have the bottle. Limited supply has been blamed on the inability of gas production companies to meet the ever-increasing demands of the population. Now we take you out of our national frontiers. We make a stop over first in Nigeria, where a separatist leader, Namdi Kano, has been liberated or released um, after he was detained for some time. Now the court declared that he was illegally detained. Let's now have more with our partners of African News. A Nigerian separatist leader accused of terrorism in the country's south was acquitted Thursday by a local court, his lawyer said. The Court of Appeal dismissed the government filed charges against Namdi Kanu in Abuja after jury faulted the legality of the case against him, according to his lawyer. Kanu remains in custody. The indigenous people of Biafra group that Kanu leads has been pressing for the southeast to break away from the West African nation and become independent. Authorities have blamed the outfit for spread of attacks targeting security forces and government installations in the region. The organization denies the charges. Kanu had been facing trial for alleged treason and terrorism, but escaped Nigeria in 2017 while on bail. He was rearrested in June last year and brought back to Nigeria from Kenya, according to his lawyers. 
He pleaded not guilty at the resumption of his trial, which his group says is being used to stifle his secessionist campaign. The campaign reminds many of the short-lived Republic of Biafra that fought and lost a war to break away from Nigeria from 1967 to 1970. And now from Nigeria, we move over to South Sudan, where several persons are said to have lost, lost their lives after floods swept away several localities. Once again, let's ha now have more with our partners of African News. At least four people have been killed during ethnic clashes in Sudan. A medical source at the Wad Al Mahi Hospital confirmed that four bodies had arrived along with multiple wounded at the facility Thursday. Violence is reported to have broke out between members of the Hausa people and rival groups, most notably the Hal Amaj tribe in the Wad Al Mahi village, east of the city of Rosales in the southern Blue Nile state. Fighting between the Hausa people and other groups over the creation of a civil authority that some saw as a means of gaining access to land first broke out in July, leaving over 100 people dead and dozens more wounded. The clashes also triggered angry protests across Sudan with the Hausa people demanding justice for those killed. In late July, senior leaders from rival groups agreed to cease hostilities. Despite the deal, clashes broke out again in September. The United Nations says the recent bouts of violence in the Blue Nile state have displaced some 37,700 people. And now we move on to sports. The officials of Lesa School of Douala City are set to grab all the three points uh, when uh, the football tournament of the Elite One Championship will kick off. That would be as from tomorrow. They were speaking during one of their training sessions. Our staff man, Smart Dikan Gabriel, was there. It was a calm and serene club that we met at the Kamrai Peach in Serene Dogbat, neighborhood of Douala. The players of Lesas 12 Douala are all determined to take all three points in the inaugural match of the Elite One coming up this weekend. We started late and we are having fitness preparation. Since the league starts on Saturday, we are concentrated towards our first game. With newcomers, we are trying to know ourselves. In their last training session before the inaugural match against Sister Sight, the head coach of Lesastro of Douala C, notwithstanding that they started preparing late for the season, their goal is to start the season on a good footing. We started preparing for the season late. We had two weeks for fitness exercises and one week to finalize on the style of play. It is not enough for us, but we are going to give our best. I'm not into spying other clubs. We are going to meet on Saturday. One of the newcomers to the Brazilians of Bepanda says he is not afraid of Union's Sportive of Douala, though it's a regional debut. All is going on well for now, and we hope that we are going to leave with all the three points on Saturday. I'm not afraid of Union of Douala, but I know Union is a great club in the country, and knowing that it's a regional debut, it is going to be a difficult game. If Union Sportive of Douala played more than one friendly match to prepare for the season, the Zastro of Douala played just one, which ended in a 2-2 draw with Le Col de Football de Brasserie du Cameroon. And in your sportive of Douala, also they are determined and poised to be crowned champions at the end of the new uh, season, football season, which has to kick off tomorrow. Once again, Smart and Jikan Gabriel uh, witnessed one of their training sessions. We are coming to, we are expecting to have the images of one of the training sessions of Union Sportive of Dualam. And they told our reporters who witnessed one of their training sessions sat they are poised and determined to be crowned champions at the end of this football season, which kicks off tomorrow. At the Kamrai Beach in Serene Dogbad, Players of Union Sportive of Douala intensified their training sessions ahead of the kickoff of the Elite One Championship this weekend. 
Vous dites vrai. C'est le B à Bagoban. Tout dans les enjeux comme ça. Under the watchful eyes of the technical bench, aided by coach Omaru Sogba, the attention is tilted towards the reaction of players when they lose a ball in the course of the game. I have seen players who are determined to play. Our training session is on two aspects, to see the reaction of players when they lost the ball and to train the players to be confident ahead of their game this weekend since it's a regional derby. Among the more than 30 players who trained, the newly recruited players are being watched very closely. Amongst them, Hashu Kerido, who just returned from Sanga Balende in Congo to play for Union Sportive of Douala this football season. It's a total calm that reigns within the team, particularly after we won the friendly match against Egle of Chang. But we are not taken away by the victory as we focus on our league game. According to the Cameroonian international goalkeeper, even though he once played with their Saturday's opponent, he will give his all to his new employer. It's a club like any other one in the league. We have our own key points. It's true, I once played with them. It won't disturb. It's the start of the league. Let's see how it goes. The Elite One Championship starts this weekend with a literal derby pitting Union Sportive to Les Astro of Douala at the Reunification Stadium. Well, let the best team take the trophy so much. Thank you, viewers, for always being there. We have come to the end of the news this evening on Equinox Television. It's weekend. We wish you a very blessed weekend. Nadine Yambo would be with you guys. That would be at 8 p.m. for the news in the French language. Bye-bye for now.